Hello, my lovely people. Welcome back to Series 8. Series 8. Series 8, the principle of prayer. Series 8, y'all. I just want to say that, um, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. God is good. Uh, I just want to let y'all know, because sometimes people, you know how you do movies. I mean, I did a video. I did a video this was a while back, and it's called God is Working Behind the Scene. And sometimes here on my channel, I like to show people, like, sometimes y'all might see me, if I'm not doing a Bible study or doing a morning devotion, sometimes between time I might do other videos. You might, I might do a get ready with me a video. It's because I want to, I want to show you like a glimpse of behind the scene of, you know, uh, you know, some, you have some YouTube, they take you on a day in the life, a day in the life of what they do. And so with me. Um, I used to do those videos, day in the life. I used to do work work videos and all that, but God led me. He said, I want you to share the gospel. And so, but as I was sitting here and I'm getting ready to do this, and I'm going to say this, y'all, I'm going to share this with y'all, and then we're gonna, I'm going to lead you out in prayer. As I was sitting here, I just want to thank God and glorify God and magnify God for his goodness. It's because uh, as I pinned this together, and when I was doing seven, I had some, like some complications and you know and then I had to redo it and so now we made it to series eight we made it to series eight and series eight it has to do with what I'm saying right now it's because it's so we have to pray and we have to say Lord bind every hindering spirit because sometimes when you're doing something for God the enemy don't like what you're doing for God and you see that's why you say I bind every hindering spirit and so sometimes um, our prayer life can be hindered. Sometimes our prayer life can be hindered. It can be hindered. It could be some things that might be blocking us in our prayer life. It can be un it could be unconfessed sin. You know, it could be a lot of things that could be hindering our prayer life. And so this is what we're gonna learn on today. A hindrance to prayer. So I just want to thank and praise God. Like God get us through series all the way from series one to seven. Now we are in series eight, and then we have two more to do. So if you have been watching my series, um, I pray that it's been blessing you all, encouraging you all, been healing you in your prayer life. Some of you have already shared your testimony. You have already, um, you have already shared your testimony. Told me what it have done for you. I'm glad. I'm glad that this blessing it blessed you, because the lady that wrote this book, um, yeah, I want to give all, I want to give um, knowledge to her. I want to acknowledge her, Jacqueline Bell. Um, she wrote this book. Um, she was my late pastor, Bishop Rafa Bell, his wife. Um, she wrote this book on the principles of prayer. And so it, it blessed me and it helped me so much. God led me to share with you all. So, um, and this is the book, The Principles of Prayer. Um, it teaches you a manual using a systematic approach to prayer. And you, as I stated before, and I'm going to keep on advertising her book. <laughs> I'm going to keep on advertising her book. You can get it on um, Amazon. It's on Amazon. It's for $15. And so uh, I was truly blessed by when she did the seminar. She did a seminar a couple of years ago. Maybe like, it might have been two, three years ago on the principles of prayer. And I learned so much. And when she did the seminar, I purchased a book when they did the seminar. And so now... She got it, so it's on Amazon. You can purchase it. So, for those of you, um, if you if you feel it, if you want to get the book, you can get the book. If not, um, I, you can. I'm sharing it with you now, and pray that it bless you. And I also want to say that I have a um, a playlist, and it's titled um, where you can go back and rewatch these series, and it's titled. Um, prayer to so I'm gonna put this in the playlist and so we're gonna get ready to pray and um we're gonna get ready to pray because this is what we're doing we're learning how to pray and so let's get ready to pray Heavenly Father in the precious mighty name of Jesus Christ 
ruler of all things. Lord, I honor you. I give you praise and thank, Lord. Lord, I thank you for touching me, for using me as your vessel, Lord, to encourage your people, to strengthen your people, Lord, in their prayer life journey. As I share this book that you'll invent uh, one of your servants, Jacqueline Bell, Lord, to bless your people on showing them, teaching them how to pray, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray that, Lord, what I share with them on today, that it fall on good grounds, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you touch my mouthpiece, Lord, let flesh decrease, Lord, that you lead and guide me, touch me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, that you bind every hindering spirit, bind every stronghold, bind every attack of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, have your way, Lord, through the serious, Lord Jesus, let there be testimonies, Lord, continue to let there be testimonies out this series, Lord, and I will forever give you praise and glory, in Jesus' name I pray. Pray. Amen. Amen. And so this is serious a a hindrance hindrance to prayer. And um I just want to mention as I was sitting here and I was getting ready to pick getting ready to come on here. As I was getting ready to come on, God just dropped a song in my spirit. He dropped a song in my spirit and it relates to the series hindrance to prayer. And the series song he dropped in my spirit is by Fred Hammond. It's my friend Hammond. I I can't play it, y'all, because I don't want to get copyright. But it's by Fred Hammond, and it's titled "Give Me a Clean Heart." Give me a clean heart. So before I started recording, I was sitting here and I was listening to the song. It was just ministering to me, and he says, "Lord, give me a clean heart, Lord, so that I can serve you. Give me a clean heart so I can serve you." And he said, "Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you." And this is what we want. We want a clean heart so that we can serve God, so we can serve him. And you say, how do I get a clean heart? You can get a clean heart by reading his word. Because as you read in God's word, the word is cleanses you. God's word is cleanses you. So as you read in his word, you can get a clean heart by reading his word. You can get a clean heart by praying. You can get a clean heart by repenting your sins. You can get a clean heart. So, I just want to share that with you all. This song, it was just ministering to me. It's by Fred Hammond, and the title of the song is Give Me a Clean Heart. So, for those of you who want to go back and listen to this song, it's by Fred Hammond, and it's titled Give Me a Clean Heart. So, we're going to go right ahead and get into the series, um, the introduction. And as I stated before, for this one, let me see. Okay, it's not that lengthy. Like, it's not that long. And so, but it is going to be a lot of scriptures I'm going to be calling out. And as I stated before, you might want to, after you get through watching this, you just come back and write the scriptures down. Or write your note, write the scriptures down. Because it's a lot of scriptures, you know. But it's going to bless you. So, the introduction reads, While the Bible teaches us that mankind can enjoy the blessings of direct and continual access to God in prayer, it must be noted that there are a variety of factors that can hinder this, this access. These hindrances to prayer that, that are outlined in this lesson can be characterized into two main categories. Blunt sinful hindrance and more subtle hindrance weight. In order to better gasp the distinction, let us examine the text. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. First, it is important to realize that the, the writer of Hebrews is utilizing a sport. Utilizing a sport, racing metaphorically in order to cover his or her points concerning sin and weight. The writer compares the Christian lifestyle to a race which we must run with patience. During races of the period in Rome, runners would race, race either completely or nearly naked so as to minimize obstruction to their movement. This flows right into the next key point. We must observe that just as runners of that day did not run while wearing cumbersome cumbersome clothing so too must a, so too must a christian live live without hindrance to his or her prayer life we can reasonably interfere that weights are sin 
They're just more subtle sand. The term weight is translated from a Greek term, agikos, which means whatever whatever is prominent in proto protuberance, bulk mass, hence a burden, weight and cumbrance. When clothes on these ancient race was not in of itself wrong, however, doing so hinders the runner ability to run. For example, one's love for their spouse is not wrong in itself, but this love can become a weight. If if it suppresses if it suppresses one love for God, these hindrances can have deadly consequences. For instance, Adam lost God's presence through his disobedience in Eden. Therefore, the Christian the Christian is instructed to shed every to shed every weight that hinders impended to their progress in their prayer life. Weights and sin both hinder every aspect of the Christian lifestyle. The sin slash weight issue can be effectively addressed through repentance. Finally, these hindrances can also be deadly in that they can cause God to turn a deaf ear to our prayer. Isaiah chapter fifty nine chapter fifty nine one through two. Outline one: disobedience. This is what we're reading right here. This is outline one. Outline one: disobedience. Genesis chapter 3 and 11. 1 Samuel 5, chapter 15, 14 and 22. Definition. Neglect or refusal to obey violation of a command. God gave man the freedom to choose to obey or disobey. Disobeying God's command is sin. James chapter 4 verse 17 and 1 John 3 and 4. Sin separate us from God. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Outline two, secret, secret slash unconfessed sin. Joshua chapter seven, verse 19 and 20 and Proverbs 28 and 13. Definition, conceal from the knowledge of all persons except the individual, private head. Uh, you know, like the story of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they was in a garden and when they sinned against God, when they um, sinned against God, they hid themselves. They went and hid themselves. And so um, then it says, no one can ever hide their sin from God, who is on my, on my, on my, on my sense, on my, I hope I pronounce it right. Omniscient, omniscient, omniscient. However, confessing our sin and forsaking inquility allow prosperity and God's mercy to work in our lives. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13. Outline 3, refusing to forgive. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. And Matthew 18, verse 15 and 17. Luke chapter 17, verse 3 and 4. Definition. To pardon, to overlook an offense and treat the offender as not guilty. Unforgiveness is the reason many people do not receive healing, deliverance, or an answer to their prayer. Forgiveness is not a feeling, it is a choice. True forgiveness is acting like it never happened. Outline 4. Marriage relationship. 1 Peter chapter 3 and 7. Definition. State of being related by kinder. Peter indicated that a husband who failed to live with his wife in an un in an understanding way and to give her honor as fellow child of God will damage his relationship with God by creating a barrier between his prayer and God. Outline 5. Doubt slash unbelief. Mark chapter 6 verse 5 and 6. And Luke chapter 1 verse 20. And Romans chapter 4 verse 19 and 22. And James chapter 1 verse 5 and 8. Definition. Doubt to wither or for Possessitate, possessitate in an opinion to be in an uncertain, unbelief, disbelief of divine revelation. A doubter is genuinely seeking for the truth in a given situation and wonder if an answer, if an answer really exists. When the answer is revealed to a doubter because of the seeking nature of his heart, the doubter will be open to accepting the truth and, appro and appropriating it in his life. Breakthrough. 
breakthrough and covenant prayer. Covenant, covenant part of devotional. Okay, that's that's what it came from. This came from breakthrough covenant part of the devotional Bible. So this is what that, that came from. The notes came from. Okay, someone with unbelief is not as easily convinced. Convinced. He firmly believes that what he knows is the absolute truth, and there could never be any other answer. The unbeliever has placed judgment has placed judgment on what God can and cannot do, thus limiting his ability to receive from God. Outline 6, Refusing Biblical Teaching, Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. Definition, to teach, to instruct, to deliver any doctrine. God will not answer the prayers of those who have no sincere commitment to obey him in his word. Prayer without love for God's word and law is hypocrites and is insulting. And we almost done, we almost done, y'all. It's almost insulting to him. Other hindrance to prayer. And we're gonna go. This is just a list of other hindrance. You know, as I stated before, some earlier before I did this video, some things that might be hindering your prayer life. And so we're gonna go through. These are some of the list. And it says, um, the first one is busyness. Luke chapter 10, 38 and 42. Laziness. Proverbs chapter 13 and 4. Poor planning. Ephesians chapter 5, 15 and 16. Arrogancy. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. And 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 38. Love for pleasure. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 4. Lack of desire. Revelation chapter 3, 15 and 17. And Satan. John chapter 10 and 10 verse 1 peter and 5 and 8 so these are some things that can hinder your prayer life along with what i stated earlier on it could be um unforgiveness it can be unconfessing and plea that you you have sinned and you haven't repented you haven't confessed you haven't repented you ever went to god and asked you and asked him to forgive you of the sin so that can be some things that can be hindering your prayer life you know so um, I pray that some of these that I share, you take these tools and, you know, use them like as an exercise. Um, use them as like an exercise and tools as like, you know, okay, um, what could be hindering my prayer life? What could be hindering my prayer I'm thinking, I wish I would have had, it's like a, when I was in the New Believers class, oh, that class, of, it really blessed me. That's most of what I've been getting the New Beginners Bible study lesson from. When I was in that class, and I remember my Sunday school teacher, she was teaching on like a lot of things that can hinder your prayer life. And so it's like this sheet. It's like the sheet they gave us this paper, like a lot of things that could be hindering your prayer life, why you might not be hearing from God. And one, like I stated, one could be like me unconfessing, you know. So take these and, um, Take these that I shared and, you know, examine yourself. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. And you may can say, like, uh, am I lacking? Am I lack? What is it that, you know, am I lacking? Am I not, you know, what is it that, what is it that I'm allowing to take, to take the place of God, to take the place of me praying? What have I been entertaining that I have been taking the place of me spending time with God. What is it? It's just like me so many times. Sometimes I could be doing something. I remember one time I was watching this TV, my favorite TV shows, and the Lord stopped me. He was like, okay, I need you to stop watching this show, and I need you to come spend some time with me. I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm like, all right, I'm coming. I'm just going to pray to you soon this episode. No, now. I need to talk. come talk to you now. And thank God I obeyed. I obey him, you know, and so I start watching it, and he wanted, it was something, a chapter, it was a chapter in the book he wanted me to read, I need you to read this, I need you to read this, and so then I read it, and then there's sometimes I could be doing something, he could be saying, I need you to start doing it, I need you to work on um, your message, I need you to work on a YouTube message for your people. I'm like, okay, Lord, and I stopped doing them. I stopped doing them. So sometimes you could be doing something, and God will say, I need you to pray. I need you to stop what you're doing right now, and I need you to pray. I need you to intercede on the behalf of a love. I need you to stop. And you need to stop what you're doing, obey his command, and do it. Do it, you know? And so I just want to share that there's a lot of things that's going to hinder your prayer life, and um, that you need to, like, um, 
you need to, you know, examine yourself. You need to examine yourself. You know, you need to examine, like, what am I doing? If I'm watching too much TV, am I, um, into, you know, on the phone too long with this individual? What is it? What is it? So, and this is how you get your healing in your prayer life, you know. So, this is a summary. And then, and we, some, and then we're going to get ready to um, close out summary and it says sin will cause God not to hear our prayers no one can ever hide their sin from God as I stated before like Adam and Eve they was in the garden and they sinned and they thought they could hide their sin from God God see he saw he says Adam Adam and Eve where are thou like where are thou like you know this is the place this is our meeting place we come here all the time when we meet you know we meet with each other so why now are you in Eve hiding did you eat off that tree? Did you and Eve eat off that tree that I told you not to eat off? And then he said, why did you hide yourself? And he said, because I was, who told you you was naked? Who told you that you was naked? Like, who told you you was naked? So you done went and ate off that tree. And now, so now, didn't I tell you not to eat off that tree? And so, for those of you thinking that you can hide your sin, like, God can't see. God see everything you're doing. He see everything you're doing, where you did it at, and who you did it with. He sees. So, what he wants you to do, because he is a loving God, what he wants you to do, like, I already saw what you did. All I want you to do is come to me and repent. I saw you. I saw you when you did it. I saw you when you took it. I saw you. All I want you to do is repent. That's it. That's all I want you to repent. I don't want you to continue in sin. I don't want you to continue stealing. I don't want you to continue, you know, this hate. I don't want you to continue down this path. I want you to come to me. I want you to come to me and repent. Talk to me. Just like you on the phone talking to that individual, sharing all your business. Come to me and talk to me. Come to me. So I just want to share that with you all. And there's another thing it says. Um, unforgiveness is a hindrance that causes people not to receive healing, deliverance, or answer to your prayer. So if you have unforgiveness in your heart. That could be one of your hindrances to your prayer life. If you have any unforgiveness in your heart, you need to pray and ask God to help you. Help you to forgive that person. No matter how bad it is, ask God to help you to forgive that person. Me, myself, personally, I'm like, Lord, I need your help. I don't want to stay mad at this person. I don't want to, um, I don't want to resent this person. I don't. I remember, um, I'm going to share this with you all, um, my first job, I was working at daycare center, and um, when I left that place, because of some stuff that they did, um, they wasn't paying us, and it was a whole lot of other stuff, and so I was so mad, and I was so angry at them, and I never forget what my sister told me. She said, Melissa, you don't want to resent them. She said, you don't want to resent them. She said, you have to forgive them. And I'm looking like, but you see what they did. Like, they ain't pay us. They did this. They did this. And she was like, you don't want to resent them. So I have to pray. I have to really pray. And then too, God led me to go on the fast. So I just want to encourage you, like whatever it is, if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, you need to pray. Ask God. Help you to forgive that person. He said, because if you don't forgive them, I won't forgive you. So you need to pray and ask God to help you to forgive that person. And then the last one is confession. Confession and repentance from sin brings restoration so that God will once again hear our prayers. So this is why you want to confess. This is why you want to confess your sins. You want to go to God and you want to say, Lord, you want to repent. You want to go to God. It's because if you don't, it will, um, if you don't, it will hinder your prayer life. What you want to do so you can get your healing. You can get rest. You want to get your healing and restoration. You want to be healed, you know, um, it's a terrible feeling. Like, it's a terrible and it's a sad feeling. I'm speaking for me from personally, like, down through the years when I have did things and thinking that, you know, I ain't got to go, you know, go to God and confess it. You know, it leaves, like, this void in your in your heart. It's like, a, like Adam and Eve. You can feel the separation. You can feel the disconnection right away that you are apart from God. You don't unplug yourself. You don't unplug yourself and it doesn't feel right. It's like this darkness, dark cloud that came over you. So this is why you want to confess your sin for healing and restoration. So you can you can have a clean heart. You can have a clean heart again. You can hear God again. You know, you can have joy. You can have peace again. You know, you want to 
go uh you want to feel that um want to feel that peace again so i just want this is the last thing and so i'm going to get ready and close us out in prayer um this really have been blessing me y'all really helping me y'all even though i don't read this book so many times i read this book over and over and over and so each time i read it it just really um just really does something to me so um i'm gonna close us out Heavenly Father, in the precious, mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, as we finishing up, we coming to a close as our series. We just finished, we just finished series seven, and now see, we finished series eight. This is series eight, and you leading us in series nine, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I pray that this bless your people, Lord, that it help them, that it heal them in their prayer life, Lord Jesus. Let this found fall on good grounds, Lord Jesus, in your mighty name, Jesus. I pray, amen, amen. And so um, tomorrow we're going to do series nine. We're going to do series nine, and series nine is titled, Don't Stop Praying. Don't Stop Praying. There's a song that it says, Saints, don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry, for the Lord has promised, and his word is true. Saints, don't stop praying. He'll hear your cry. So I pray that you all um, bless my series eight. This is um, series eight on hindrance to prayer. And in series nine, tomorrow we're going to do it. Don't stop praying. So until next time, it's your girl, Melissa. I love you with the love of Jesus. God bless.